If you experience video stuttering or lag when you're using a recording or streaming application like OBS Studio, or you get audio crackling with your DAW, I have four hidden settings today that may just solve your problem. A few weeks ago when I shared my seven critical tips to optimize your PC for music production, I had some great questions about the bonus tip, and in particular, how to keep the settings from reverting back to standard when you reboot Windows. Now there are some great tips in that video and I encourage you to check it out, but today it got me to thinking about a few other settings that'll really optimize your experience in OBS Studio and other streaming and recording applications, as well as DAWs. Now there are a number of settings that Windows doesn't include an obvious way to make permanent. And this can be a good thing if you have a multi-workflow PC with a lot of diverse and heavy applications you need to run. But if you're a content creator or you use your PC for any kind of audio, video, or music production, there's a number of settings that are a must and you're going to want them to be there every time. Now to make this happen, we're going to use an application called Process Lasso. This is a free application. Once you have Process Lasso open, there's a couple of preliminary settings we want to take care of. First, we'll go into the main menu and look for Pro Balance Enabled. If there's a check mark beside this, you want to click it to disable it. Now, Pro Balance is a proprietary algorithm built into Process Lasso that takes care of all the scheduling of background processes. Now, this can be useful if you have a lot of things installed on your computer that are running in the background. I recommend against that for audio and video PCs, but nonetheless, that's the application. I prefer to manage these things myself, so I'm turning it off. The next thing you do is go into the Options menu, choose General, and Configure Startup. And in there, we want to make Process Lasso as transparent as possible. Basically, we only want to see it when we want to make changes. So to get that to happen, we click Do Not Start at Login for the GUI. And what we want to do is start the engine as a service on boot. So that's all we need there. Then we'll click Next. And it's going to give us the option here to store this in a custom area and also to let Process Lasso manage all processes that it has access to. Once that's done, you simply click Finish. It's going to tell you you need to restart it for it to take effect, and it'll do that. Now, if you're using the free version, it's going to ask you to wait a few seconds, but beyond that, there's nothing you need to do. So again, for what we're doing here, purchase is not necessary. I'll just click Continue, and we're back in. Now, the first application I'm going to configure is OBS Studio, but if you're using another video streaming and recording application like Streamlabs OBS, this will apply to you as well. So I'm going to go into Process Lasso, and I'm going to find OBS64.exe, and I'm going to right click on it. First thing I want to do is configure CPU priority to always be high. Okay, and that's a fairly straightforward thing to do, but if you have it configured at high, it's going to ensure that it gets the maximum attention of whatever cores it's running on. Now, the next thing again, I'll right click on OBS 64. And if you go into the affinity settings, if you choose always, you'll see that it allows you to set the CPU affinity, much like Task Manager will, except this will always be applied. Now, even numbers are physical cores, zero as well. And then odd numbers are going to be hyper threaded or virtual cores. Now, oftentimes with an audio video application, it's better to run on physical cores. But the thing is, this is very rigid. Once you set it, this is all you get. And that's okay for some services, but not necessarily for an application that can draw different amounts of power from your CPU. So what I like to do is use the CPU sets feature in here. And if we do that and click always, you'll see we get a table again of the cores. And I've selected again zero and all of the even cores up to number 22. That's because I have an AMD 5900X, which has 12 cores, 24 threads. Now, what's interesting about this setting, about using, using the sets instead of using affinity, is that this is a little bit looser. So these are going to be the preferred cores that will be used with OBS as long as they don't become bogged down. If they get bogged down, it allows the operating system to go ahead and use other cores that are available. So this is really a great way to optimize things to run how you want them but still leave you some breathing room in case things get out of hand. So we'll just go OK. And then again, I'm going to right click on OBS64.exe. And this time I'm going to go to IO priority. And once again, always. Now OBS uses a lot of IO. And so if there's any kind of delay because another process is accessing hard drives or, or even video capture cards, that can cause issues. And so I set this to high as well. And finally, in OBS 64, right-clicking again, memory priority always. 
And you'll see that we have options from normal through very low. None of them are high, but normal means full access. So here I'm gonna click normal. And with those settings in place, OBS Studio is now going to start every time with high priority using the preferred threads on your CPU with maximum allocation and access to memory and IO. So you're set up to get the best performance out of OBS Studio. This, by the way, also includes the interlink from your CPU to your GPU. So that's part of the bus, part of the PCI bus on your computer. So you're going to get the best communication, best encoding that your hardware can support. Next, we're going to go through configuration of DAW. I'm going to use Studio One, but again, the same is going to apply regardless of which one you like to use. So once again, I'm going to find the process for my DAW. In this case, it's Studio One.exe. I'll again right click on this. Once again, priority should be set to be always at high. So make sure you have that set up. Then the next thing you want to do is go back and right click. And here again, we have the option of CPU affinity or CPU sets. Once again, DAWs tend to perform the best with physical cores. This is not always the case. You can do some experimenting here, but I like to go in and create a set for this to always run again. And you'll see that I'm using all of the even cores here as well as zero. Again, the physical cores on my CPU. So once you have those selected, you'll just go okay. Then we'll go back to Studio One, right click, choose uh, IO priority always and make sure that's on high and then go into memory priority always and make sure that's set at normal as well. With these settings, our DAW has maximum access to all the IO it needs. So again, your storage, your drives, your, your audio interface, as well as video to display on the screen. So it's got really best access to everything. Full access to memory, which is very important for running VSTs and virtual instruments. So whatever memory you have, again, it's going to be kind of at the top of the chain. At least nothing will have a higher priority than it that's going to bump it out of the way. And finally, we'll configure the settings for the Windows process that manages all audio that the operating system has access to. And this kind of addresses the bonus tip that I had in the previous video where we want to make those settings permanent. So going into process lasso, we look for audiodg.exe. Once again, right click and we want to go ahead into our CPU priority and make sure that's always set to high. We can then go to our CPU affinity and this time it's very important that it's locked to only one physical core. So you want to make sure that you don't have all available here, that you only have one selected. Two is kind of the standard default that most people use. You can try any of the other even numbers, four, six, eight, 10, etc. but two generally gives you pretty good results. Then also you want to go into IO priority here, make sure that's set at high and memory priority and also always and normal. And this will give audio DG, which again is the process that manages all audio in windows, maximum access to memory, IO, as well as one core on the processor. So it's not going to move and bounce around from core to core, which can cause crackling and jitter, stuttering. And also it's going to have no dropouts, at least if your computer has enough power to handle it, which uh, again, any modern computer pretty much is going to be able to take care of audio if we have it configured properly. And as a bonus tip, many audio interface manufacturers include a service running in the background that facilitates communication between the audio interface and a control application running on your PC. Now these will be different with every audio interface manufacturer, but I'll show you a couple I have on my system. If you notice here, I have Personas Hardware Access Services. That's because I have a Personas Quantum 2632 running. And if I have this here, I wanna make sure that when I go into it, I don't need to worry about the priority, but it's good to have the IO priority set here at always and on high. And you can also give it memory access, although that's going to be less important. Another example of this here we'll go to is UA Connect. That's from Universal Audio. You may notice that you have multiple entries here and that can be because you have more than one device connected to your computer or you have more than one instance running or even this will show up if you have Spark. But again, the same thing applies. Go in and right click and set the IO priority to always be at high. Once you've completed all of the settings, go ahead and close Process Lasso. It will continue to run as a service in the background ensuring that all of your applications receive the priority that you preset, but you won't be bothered with pop-ups or even anything in the taskbar. Now, sometimes you may find that a hardware upgrade is necessary, 
but there are many times that common stutter, lag, and latency issues can be solved by simply adjusting some of the hidden settings in Windows. If you're looking for other ideas about how to optimize your streams or recordings, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.